Okay, so now that we've cured, we're going to make sure that we don't have any extra flash because if you do and you go to the polish and everything, it makes everything ugly. So I use either a Cleoid or a, wait, yeah, Clear yeah. Discoid and just scrape the tooth surface that's not supposed to have composite on it. If there is composite, just kind of like pull it off. You can also do the same with the interproximal area. So if you take your interproximal carver and just go through and make sure there's not any extra on the side. And just scrape all the extra off. So if you have built it up this way, you have very little work that you need to do now. So if you want to define the grooves a little more, you can use a burr. Some people use a half round, um, a half round burr and just put it where the grooves are supposed to be. So just use like a half, half round burr, put it where the grooves are supposed to be and slowly just try to make a little more defined grooves. Or somebody, some people use like a 34. Because it's an inverted cone, you can use like the corner of the cone. Like put it diagonal and use just the, the edge of it to cut. But I think it's kind of hard because I can't angle it very well. And then some people use a flame burr, flame shaped diamond, to try to get a more defined groove. So either way you choose, I usually use the diamond. And so I just define the grooves a little more. But you don't have to do it as much because you've already, you know, made the shape. Mm -hmm. So I have the diamond on slow speed hand piece and I'm just gonna go in and define the grooves a little bit. You wanna define them a little more than you think because when you go and polish it, it'll become flatter. So make sure you define the grooves and the, the fossa next to the margin. If you have any extra, be really careful and clean it up. So you can clean it up on the sides if you need to, or you can try to do an embrasure there, the flusal embrasure if you need to. Uh-huh. Do you like, like, do you keep the burr along with the cusp? Like, you know when you carve a mug and you no. keep it the same, so you don't? Yeah. Okay. Because if you keep it on the cusp, you'll cut you're the cusp. you cut the cut, yeah. Yeah, so you just, you just kind of define the groove a little more. And when you go back to, you go back to polish, it'll be better. Okay. So, when you polish, you can use the purple cup in our pit. I don't really like them because they leave this ugly purple thing. You could try to use the discs, but they don't get in the grooves. So I found these. Yeah. These right here. Um, you can get them at the Shine Store or from Clinic. <laughs> um, and use that to polish. So you want to do this very gently because you don't want to take away all the anatomy Can you use the slow speed for the diamond and the mm -hmm. polishing? Because I don't want to take off that much. So I'm going on each cusp where the grooves are and I'm just kind of slowly polishing them. If you buy the kit from the Shine Store, they come with these little tips that I really like because they kind of get in the grooves. And you just polish, polish away. 
just go from like medium to fine. So I'm mainly going where the grooves are. So I want those to be defined. Always check every once in a while. Clean it off with water and air to see how you're doing. And then just continue polishing until it looks nice to you. Some people, for a high shine, they use um, profi paste and the profi cups. Um, mm -hmm. You know what they look like? Yeah. So the profi paste is like what you the dentist use on you, and then you just use the cup, and then you polish, and it'll Where give you that in the clinic. clinic. Um, and you just kind of use that. You put it on a hand piece, but then you polish that. So that's for the occlusal. Sometimes, if you don't have your occlusal embrasure, you can also use the polishing strips too. So kind of tilt it a little towards the tooth. Yeah. Tilt it a little towards the tooth, like this, and then gently polish, gently like shape it so that way you can get more of a embrasure there. So simple, but makes us feel so dumb. <laughs> so you check now. Check your interproximal area. If it has a lot of overhang, then you're gonna have to use the coarse and the medium. If not, then just jump to fine and super fine. And there's this area in the middle that has no sanding thing, and that'll help you um, slide it in. Okay, so for this, it's below the contact area where it's hugging the tooth, so it's okay. So now you kind of want to do this S kind of shape like this because you don't want to just wrap, loop it around like this and just keep on going at it because it'll make a funny shape. It'll make it flat. So you want to do this S shape like this and make sure it's away from the contact. If it's too close to the contact, push it into the gingiva a little bit and just make this like S shape and pull it through. And then you want to do it the other other direction too. So if you want to do it the other direction, you want to do it this way. So your S goes this way. And you just pull it through. So you do it a couple times until you think it looks nice. So you do it a couple times on the fine and then you do it on the super fine and then just make your composite look pretty. That's it. Ooh.